This morning, I just want to continue to share with you on the aspect of faith. All right? We are talking about faith, you know, where we can receive our lost blessings. So faith is something very important. And having faith in us that will dispel all kinds of fear, all right, of our daily life. Now, the word that we just read is what we call the Sermon on the Mount by Jesus himself. Now, from verses 25 to 34, if you were to look at it carefully, there are five areas where Jesus says, do not worry. Right? There are five do not worry has been mentioned uh, in the scripture. This is one to highlight to you, so that we will know what it's our Christian life is all about. All right, the first one, if you notice, you will find it in verse 25. Do not be worried about your life. That's the first. And the second one you'll find in verse 27, that you being worried, you can't add a single hour to your life. And thirdly, in verse 28, why are you worried about your clothing? Right? And fourthly, you'll find in verse 31, do not worry then. And finally, in verse 34, so do not worry about tomorrow. There are five do not worries has been mentioned by Jesus on, on this portion of scripture, which is very important in our life and this sermon on the mount is not for non-believers it is for christians all right because christians we are bound to get worried about over so many things all right we're bound to get worried about so many things and upset but for non-believers everything is a turmoil because they don't have christ they don't have jesus in their life so everything is a problem to them everything is an issue everything is a turmoil Everything is a confusion. Everything is a loss hope. But unlike them, we who are in the Lord, we have hope in the Lord our God. Because the word says, all things are possible in Him. In Jesus, all things are possible. And that is the reason Jesus continuously say, do not worry. Now the first thing we see here, the Lord said, do not worry about your life and your body. All right, That's the first thing He says. Secondly, he says, do not worry about your food and shelter. And thirdly, he says, do not worry about your stature. We'll come to that. Then he says, do not worry about your clothing. And then fifthly, he says, do not worry, do not thinking about food and drink and clothing. And finally, he says, do not worry about tomorrow, live one day at a time. Now, these are the things where in our everyday life, you know, worries just floods into our life and we get so upset. And when the worries comes into us, our faith flees away from us. Our faith no longer stands firm. Our faith is shaken up because of all the life pressure that comes into it. And that is the reason Jesus continuously speaks about it. And Paul also mentioned about it. Even Peter has mentioned about it, which we will see shortly, saying that we should not be worried. We should not be having anxiety or being anxious. All right. So this is very important about uh, life. Firstly, let me just mention to you, there are two kinds of food, two kinds of drinks, and two kinds of clothing. All right. They have everything has got two kinds. The first one is what is an essential items. What is necessary? Okay, what is essential, what is necessary is the first kind. The second one is extravagant, extravagant or very luxurious items all right, that leads us to a self-indulgence. Right, this is something that we need to understand when the Lord spoke about talking about, you know, do not worry. Now some of us goes into a lot of problem. All right? What is necessary in our life, that's what we should be looking for not into extravagant. All right, I will give you one or two examples. Now, buying a shirt for hundred or dollars, all right, and buying a shirt about twenty-five dollars is still the same. All right, I speak through experience. A shirt that is worth about thirty or twenty-five dollars still serves the purpose. All right. And of course it does not carry the name of John Masters or Perini or Orlando. It doesn't carry all that. But it still serves the purpose. Can you imagine from $100 to $25? Right? 
It's still. So do you need to wear, you know, branded items? That shows about indulgence. All right, that's a lot of indulgence. So what is simple lifestyle? What is necessary that we should be living? All right, this is something that we need to understand. I have a neighborhood friend, you know, who's a Christian who goes to a city have his church. They are living in, in poverty. The husband works on odd jobs, all right, and then the wife goes around, you know, and there's some churches helps them food, and we too have helped them. And suddenly the day she came and said, uh, ask to pray for us. I said, why? Uh, my children, I'm putting them into uh, homeschooling in the, the church beside of my place. Uh, Grace is and they're going to send them. It's going to cost them a bomb. All right? So I said, do you need this now? You can't even afford to pay your electricity bill, which I know personally. All right? They could not pay their electricity bill right now. They have taken off the meter. All right? And the neighbors are now providing help. With all that going on and you have living on arms, do you need to send your two children to homeschooling? Is it important? You know what she turned around and said? My brother's children are all going to uh, homeschooling, so I have to send them. Can you imagine Christians speaking such kind of non-simplicity life, extravagant luxury life to show <laughs> off to the people, but within your home, poverty is ridden. This is what I'm calling about, what is necessity, what is essential. So Christian life, my friend, you have to live within your means. Not to go on. Yes, some people will say buying a, you know, a branded item can last us a long time. Right? I can refute that. I bought cheap things that last me a lifetime. It depends on how you use. All right? And so this is it. How is our, our, our lifestyle then? So there are two things. One is necessity, what is essential, and the other one is extravagant or luxury in terms. You choose what you want. And, and if you live within your means, it's, it's all right. But some of us go beyond it, my friend. Let me explain to you. Food, shelter, clothing are necessity of life. All right? It's a necessity of life. All right? It's no wrong to work for them. It is no wrong to secure a future about them. Now, what is wrong? There are four folds to me. The first one is ignoring and neglecting God while we work. All right, now if you have work, God in your workplace, all right, if God is beside you in your work, you will be mindful what you're working as. You will be truthful in your work. And so much though when your bosses praise you, so much though when your bosses hits you with bonuses, when they give you a lot of incentive, it is a testimony to the Lord that you worship. If you don't receive that, don't blame others. Now we play a lot of games. Playing a, a game, huh? uh, we talk about others. I did this, I did this. If you have worked hard, if you have worked sincerely, if you have worked truly, God will surely bless you. All right, there's no reason God will forget you. All right, our God is a God who remembers you very well. He has inscribed you in His palms. You are His apple of His eyes. These are words that have been told to us. And why is it that you're not blessed in your workplace? Because that we have neglected God in your workplace. Alright, this is the first thing. Secondly, you work day and night and worrying how to keep what you have. You work day and night. Alright, and you keep on worrying all right, what you have and how to make more and more. Alright, this is what we all want to. And we go into worry some. And the third one is that Never been satisfied with the necessities. You are not satisfied with the necessities. Friends, we must live for ourselves and for God, not for others. Just because your neighbor has got a big TV, you don't have to buy a big TV. Just because your neighbor has got a big car, you don't have to buy a big car, then in the days to come, you cannot be able to pay the installment. Now these are things that we are living for people to show off. You don't have to. All right? You don't have to at all. My friend, we need to live with all simplicity. All right, with all the simplicity, all right, God will provide you. I think I told you some years ago, all right, I never had a CD player. I wanted to have a CD player. I never had a CD player and I couldn't afford to buy one. All right, so I lived without a CD player until somebody blessed me. All right, that person is sitting right in this church. She blessed me with a CD player. All right? And I'm thankful to God after so many years, 
I never owned a CD player. I had so many CDs, all right? But it never brought to a mind that I need to buy, I need to go and quest, you know, I need to somehow or other get one. It never occurred to me at all. Because it was not essential to me. All right? It was not a necessity for me. If God gives, God gives. So we don't have to race with people. You don't have to race with your relatives. You don't have to race with everybody. You will be a pauper at the end of the day. So think carefully. Think like godly children. Live within your means. All right? So you don't have to buy things which you cannot afford. And you cannot pay. When you cannot pay, your testimony goes down the drain, my friend. So be careful. All right? Just be satisfied with your necessities. And fourthly, neglecting the needs of others who have got greater need than you have. Right? Sometimes we just don't care about people. We don't care about what people don't have. We are so satisfied with what we have. We neglect the needs of others. All right, friends, let me challenge you. When you go back home today, you have lunch. And tonight you have got good dinner. All right, but I can tell you, if you can jump and pop into my car, I can take you to a place where there is no food for this afternoon. People have lunch. All right, and there are people who don't have dinner tonight. I can take you, I can show you, and you can see for yourself. They live in rotten homes. Or when you enter the house, they have nothing for you to sit on. You have to sit on the floor. Right in Malaysia, you don't have to talk about India or China. You don't have to talk about third world countries. Right here itself, people are living in poverty. Who needs help? All right, who needs help? Friends, you don't have to give everything what you have. You can give your little. And that little will prove a lot to this need. So this is important, my friends. So these are the four areas that will become wrong before the eyes of God, all right, if you do not differentiate what is essential and what is extravagant. This is, right, it's Christian lifestyle. Right? It's a simple lifestyle. It's a simple lifestyle that you need to lead, all right, and then you will gain a blessings. So I just want to share with you some areas where there are some areas why we should not worry. There are some areas we should not worry. Let me just tell you one or two. Now the first thing is that we need to understand and apprehend life is more than clothing. Alright? Life is more than food. Alright? Life is more than clothing. If you have a good health, alright, expensive clothes are not important. Alright? This is important. So, life is not all about food. Life is not all about clothes. Alright? And... Men is greater than what the birds that God has feeding them daily. Now I'm looking at the scripture. All right. Now we see how God feeds the birds. All right. Life necessity. When God can give food and shelter to the birds of the air. Behold, we just we must study these birds. Now do these birds worry about their food? All right, we enjoy the singing of the bird huh? when it tweets. All right, we enjoy the, the beautiful, you know, the noise they make. All right, but yet we see God's provision for them. And likewise, we need to understand God has also, all right, takes good care of us, those who really trust Him. All right, the reason is, man is a higher being. And man is in it made by the image of God, not an animal. And man can have a personal relationship with God. He is noble, he is excellent, all right? He is a spiritual being, all right? He can have a relationship with God unlike an animal that he created. All right, so we are special, my friend. We are special before God. So since we are special before God, all right, God takes us much more than the birds up in the sky. The birds doesn't worry. All right, the birds doesn't bother, but we are under a lot of botheration. We are really worried about what we're going to eat, what we're going to wear, and this is what our problem is these days. And then itself causes a lot of worry. Job chapter 35. Job chapter 35, verse 11 tells us this. All right. Who teaches more than the beasts of the earth and make us wiser than the fowls of the heaven? This is God. Job is saying, listen, 
Alright, who teaches us much more than the beasts of the earth. He teaches us a lot of things. Alright, and he makes us wiser. He gives us wisdom <clears throat> than the fowls of the heaven. Alright, he gives us much more. We are a noble being above all the creation, my friend. There is no one creation is higher than us. Alright, within the earthly realm. And God has created in such a thing that we should not worry about food and shelter. Now this is the important thing God is giving us. Alright, that we should not worry about, alright, about food and the shelter the, the Lord has provided for them. Right, so we need to understand that. The next is, we should not worry about the change in body. Now verse 27. Now in verse 27 of Matthew chapter 6 tells us, which are you worrying can add one cubit to its stature. Alright? Now do you know, we call this self curse. Alright? Stature. You know we will say, at this age, uh, who is going to give me a job? Alright? At this age, uh, what can I do? This is all a self imposed curse upon you, my friend. Alright? It is against the scripture that when God has given you a talent, alright, God has given you a talent and the talent will be multiplied. So don't worry about your stature. Don't worry about your age. It is all pointless. Because we have a God whom we trust. Alright, a God who can work with us. And, and so we do not worry about our stature, but we in ourselves, alright, we worry. Alright, at my age can I do this? At my age, can I do this? At my age, I will not get a job. At this age, you know, we all worry about our age and our stature. All right? And we worry about everything about us. When we should be living it unto the Lord our God. Let's all turn to the book of Proverbs. Now, Proverbs... Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. All right? In all your ways acknowledge Him. He will make your paths straight. All right? He will make your paths straight, not good. All right? If you can trust the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. All right? Sometimes we have our own understanding our own presupposition, things that will not happen, you confess it. I do not know like tomorrow, uh, my job, I don't know how long. You confess it, you receive it. That's about it, my friend. Why are you bringing up tomorrow's trouble today? Leave it there tomorrow. And today's trouble is enough for you. And we make a lot of confessions. We make a unfounded confessions and we worry about for tomorrow. That's what the Bible tells us. If you trust the Lord with all your heart, not some of your heart. Alright, if you trust the Lord with all your heart and you don't lean on your own understanding, the Lord will make your path straight. When you acknowledge Him in all your ways, that means God is with you in your office. God is with you in your business place. God is with you wherever you are. Even that danger, that lust, that you see will not touch you. This is what it is. But we are people who get worried, all right, worrisome, and when we get worried, what happens? All right, we fall into sick. All right, do you know that many of us who get worried, get migraine, backache, all kinds of ache will come, my friends. Let me tell you, you go to the hospital, the doctors will say, you're perfectly fit, clean bill. But it's all your spiritual problem. You worry unnecessarily. All right, you worry about tomorrow. You worry about everything. Alright? God is there for you to provide. Let me tell you this. God is there somehow rather to see through. You don't have to beg. You don't have to borrow. You don't have to go and ask people. 
friend, I stand before you as a testament. I've got two children who are going to college and one is working already. Thank God for that. We never went to anyone begging. We never went to someone to ask for help. Please pay for the fees. We never said any of that nonsense. We look to God. All right, trust the Lord with all your heart and the Lord will provide. And this is what we are. We have not gone and asked anybody for it. God has provided it because you trust God. When you trust God, God will provide you, my friend. You don't have to go on your own, all right, on your own uh, understanding. On your own understanding, you have no God in your plan of your life. When you have no God to plan of your life, it remains a plan. That's all. It will never come into reality. I tell you this. The day you have God in your plan, which is His plan for you. Many of us plan down like an architect. I want to do this, 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 this. And you're stuck into it. You're wallowed into it. It never gets happened. Why? You have planned it, not God. You have not put God into it. So I understand this, my friend. You are, many of us are working with our own understanding. All right, and when we begin to work with our own understanding, failures. When failures come, what happened to us? All right, we get upset. When we get upset, you go into turmoil. Then you get heart sick. Then you get anxiety. When anxiety fills in, all kinds of sickness comes in. All right, you have all kinds of sickness and maybe, all right, there are some sickness, Wilbur Smith says, all right, and Black Merrimore says, these are some of the things that we need to understand, my right, friend. So we need to understand something that we need, should not be worrying. All right, we should not be worrying about anything, right, what is for. Then we also continue to see, friends, about lilies. Now the scripture tells about the lilies. All right, now you see that in verse 20, 28. Now lilies, they grow in a very deep root. All right, they grow in a very deep root. So when you have a grown lily, you need to really unearth them to remove it completely, yeah. But let me tell you this. Lilies dies from weather. Alright? They drop to the ground. They get decayed. They get soiled up. Alright? And they pass down existence and they're gone forever. Similarly, here the scripture tells us we should not be worrying about the clothing that we're going to wear. Alright? Let me tell you something about clothing. Clothing fades. Alright? After some time the washing, it fades the color. Am I right? Sometimes the, the pattern gets. Cut it out. Then it also gets wears out. Then it goes out of fashion. All right? And then it's been laid down and the clothing just ceases to exist. But you do exist. All right? Today we see in some of us, huh, we have a lot of clothes in our closet and we still say we don't have clothes to wear. Am I right? Very common, right? Huh? Husbands are smiling. All right? Yes. They will be, only when you open the cupboard, you can't close the cupboard. Huh? That much overflowing, all right? And they still got to say, I don't have enough clothes, all right? Simple lifestyle, my friends. But let me tell you this. There are people, all right, the scripture tells us, if someone do not have a coat, if you have two, give one to them and one for yourself, all right? So we can give it out. There are people who have no. I'm, I'm sure you have seen it yourself. Some years ago, we went down to Paulus Bank. Our bus and on the bottom where the storage is, well, we had it full of clothes. The minute after all the caroling, we came down, we gave them the food, we gave them our adoration, and then we opened up and we laid out the clothes. Within 15 minutes, everything gone out of sight. It's only the, the garbage bag was left behind. All right. It's all gone within minutes. People needing of clothes. But here we are, having some clothes that you cannot wear, you're still hanging inside. Give it to them, some people that who can use it, my friend. No harm. No harm using a cloth that's been used before. Let's not have the kind of pride. Ah, I will never wear clothes all right, if someone else has used this. That's very arrogance. All right? We need to be humble. All right? If you have able to wear it, I don't mind wearing someone's shirt. I have no issues in that. All right? It fits me, I wear it. All right? Let me tell you that. You may say, Pastor, you are you. I am not like you. All right? Yeah. But where's our simple lifestyle? That's what is important, my friend. Okay, so you, we need to understand a little bit about worry. All right, we need to understand about worrying, why this worry causes into turmoil and whatnot. Let me just tell you, when we took cute this worry, the day that you worry about tomorrow, 
when you when you worry about nothing, God will provide for you everything. When you say that live a simple lifestyle, and that is what faith is all about, my friend. All right. So worrying is pointless. It is useless, and it is sinful. All right, and must not be tolerated. All right, that we need to understand. And secondly, you must understand, all right, that worrying is actually against God's plan. It robs your faith. Or right, by worrying, it robs your faith, it robs your peace, it robs your trust in your Heavenly Father. That's it. The day you begin to worry, your trust in the Lord is no longer there. All right, the day you start to worry, there's no more peace of mind. But this is it because it has robbed you of your peace it has robbed you of your faith so why do you think you're going to be blessed how do you think you're going to be blessed all right when your faith has been completely and we all live like an orphan when we have a heavenly father who is there for us at all time who is this has told us i will never leave you i will never forsake you all right, I'm not like men who will say promises and forsake, but the Lord says, I will not leave you, neither will I forsake you. And this is what the Lord has given us a promise. And yet we look at ourselves, we worry for nothing. All right, we worry for everything. So worry is one of the deadly sins in our Christian life that robs your faith. Remember the scripture says, if you have a faith the size of a mustard seed, if you can tell the mountain to go, it can go. All right, do we have that kind of mustard seed faith? Always we, you know, every time when we talk about some problem issue, I see sense of worriness coming to your life. All right, and we speak a lot of unconfessful words. I think I got evil spirit. I think in my house got evil spirit. Why? Why are you giving importance to the devil? I don't understand. La. You all are giving glory to the devil. You're supposed to be giving glory to the Lord. La. Let's give glory to God and say, my God is living in my house. I haven't heard that, you know. I think my house got evil spirit, you know. Uh, my, uh, my, the room got evil spirit, you know. Just because I'm a ghost pastor, uh, all right, you call me a thing. I never heard. In my house, the Lord is moving. Why la? All right. Understand this. All right, the devil wants to give you the maximum so that he will start worrying about everything. Stop worrying about your life. Stop worrying about your children. Stop worrying about your job. Stop worrying about your business. Stop worrying about everything, my friend. Lay it all at the feet of our Lord Jesus and just say, Lord, my battle is yours. All right? And that's it. You move on. And if you can be able to have that, you'll be a better person. All right? You won't fall ill. You won't fall into sickness. All right? You will not go into turmoil. You will not go into anxiety. All right, let me just show you a verse. Let's all turn to 1 Peter. One Peter chapter five. And if you all can underscore these words, whenever you go into your fits of your 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 worrisome, let this verse come to you as a name for you. All right. 1 Peter chapter 5 and underscore this verse, verse number 7. Alright, he says to you, casting all your worries, casting all your anxiety, alright, on him. Who is him? You look at the word him, it starts with a capital H. It talks about our heavenly father. Alright, so you need to cast all your worries. You need to cast all your anxiety on him. And what the word says? He cares for you. Look, my friend. He cares for us. So why are we need to worry? Why do we worry about everything else? We need to understand this. Alright, you need to cast all your anxiety, everything that troubles you, right? Just leave it to the Lord because He cares for us. All right, you can sleep peacefully. Do you know that some of us cannot sleep peacefully? You toast and turn around because you are worrying about tomorrow. You don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. All right, we just bring a lot of unfounded things into your mind. All right, because you ask for it. So remember this: cast it to the Lord. Don't take it back. 
All right, because the Lord our God cares for us. All right, and then we look at another verse and we close. All right, look at chapter four of Philippians. All right, again underscore this particular verse. Now, chapter four of Philippians and look at verse six. It tells us this again: Be anxious for nothing. That means do not worry for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. All right, now, how many of us, when you begin to worry, now worry do come into everybody's life, huh? when you begin to worry, do you engage in prayer? That's faith, huh? Do you engage in prayer or you start talking about it? Or do you start, you know, wallowing to it? No, you don't. All right, that's what... Here Paul tells the Philippines. <coughs> he says, when you are anxious for nothing, take everything. Alright? By prayer, by supplication. Where? Our prayer life is so weak. When your prayer life is so weak, your supplication is weak. Alright? And how can you be thanksgiving to make your request be known to the Lord? Now this is it, my friend. How many of us our life prayer has been effective? How many of us are not giving importance to prayer? Right? If you are a person, if you want not to worry, then your prayer life has to be strengthened. We have a lot of hours in the day. Alright? A lot of hours in the day. You spend an hour day, you know, in the Lord in prayer, bringing to the Lord. I tell you, your place of work will be wonderful. I've told you this before. In Singapore when I was working, alright, we work in a big yard. Alright? We build ships. You know, when we started this, you now we have one hour break. First 15 minutes, we will get to the cafeteria and have our lunch. Then we have 45 minutes. A few of us got together. We were carrying the small Gideon Bibles in our work. You know, we have a long suit. All right? So we carried it in our pocket. And around about, you know, after about 15 minutes, our quick lunch, we'll come to the, the plant wherever we have some quiet moment. We began to sit down and read the Word of God and we pray. And there were some people says, can you pray for us this afternoon? We are going to go in to do this particular uh, welding job. It's going to be tough. Pray for safety. We prayed for them. You know how encouraged it was. The group that started with five of us in my plan, it grew to 100. That we had to break into small, small group and group, you know, appoint leaders. And the management began to wonder, what is this people? They thought we are forming union. All right, until then we have to speak to our big boss and says, please do not misunderstand us. We are not forming union. You can come and join us. And he did come and join us once. And when that day when he came, we prayed for him. We prayed for his family. He was so joyful. And he told us that management staff, you can use our conference room from now on. Can you see how our accident rate fell? All right. Our turnover fell. And the orders were increased. All right, we had a lot of oil rich orders were coming in. You know why? Christians are gathering and praying. And we got good bonuses. We worked hard. All right. And we told the Christian brothers, you know, in the yard, you need to work means you work unto God. Don't play a fool. All right. And they worked hard. There were disparity between the non-Christians and the Christians because the Christians' productivity was there. And God blessed. This is what you can do, my friend. You can be a nuclear in your office. But you're defeated. Or if you say, Pastor, I don't have another fellow Christian in my office. Then start on your own. Alright? Have a quick lunch. Come back to your room or to your table or whatever. Read the word of God. Start praying. You can do that. Friends, strengthen your life in prayer. Alright? The day you begin to pray and begin all your worries and everything to the Lord and surrender to the Lord, you become a better. So stop worrying. All right? Be anxious for nothing but everything in prayer. And let known your request to the Lord our God. All right? John chapter 15 verse 7 says, Ask everything in Amen. prayer. I will do it for you. Amen. This is it. So let's not lose out to the personal time that we have with God. And He is our God. He is our fantastic God that we have. Yeah, our Heavenly Father. All right? And we have seen enough. Our Heavenly Father's got to hear. Jeremiah 33, 3 tells us what? Call unto me and I will answer you. We have a Heavenly Father. Then you can call unto Him and He will listen to you. He's not high up in the sky. He's not invaded some wall. 
all right, he's not here hanging up in the trees. It's not that he's right with us. When you call unto him, he listens and he answers. All right, so let us train ourselves not to worry, my friend. Worry is sinful, is an enemy to God. All right, stop all this worry. All right, and it erodes, it robs your faith in the Lord. All right, so give importance to prayer and standing firm in faith. You will defeat the devil. Let us pray. Father.